My name is Doug Carroll and I'm a professor at the University of Utah in the departments of surgery and human genetics. I'm the director of the In Vitro Fertilization Laboratory and the Andrology Laboratory at the University of Utah and I'm also a co-founder of Episona. My emphasis in, in research is the genetics and epigenetics of male infertility and how the sperm affects embryogenesis, specifically the epigenetics of how sperm affects embryogenesis. Male infertility is a serious and a common problem. In the United States, about 15% of couples are infertile. Of those 15% of couples, about a third it's due solely to male infertility. Another third it's due to a combination of male and female infertility. When a couple's infertile, usually they sit down with the female's infertility doctor or a gynecologist who evaluates their, their infertility. In many cases, the only test that, that, that's performed is a semen analysis. A semen analysis looks at if there are sperm, and if there are sperm, whether they can swim or not. It really doesn't predict fertility very well at all. Uh, solely tells you if there are sperm that are modal or not. But there really has not been, up until this point, any test that evaluates, can this man's sperm lead to a successful, viable pregnancy when the couple goes through infertility treatment? The seed test was developed based on a foundation of a, of a series of epigenetic studies looking at, at uh, how these chemical marks are in normal sperm and the alterations that we see in infertile couples. What we found particularly was that DNA methylation of certain genes is altered in number one, men that are infertile, and number two, men that have gone through IVF and don't make good quality embryos that typically lead to a pregnancy. So we can use the seed test to analyze those men before they go through treatment and diagnose if they have that problem and potentially to help them alter lifestyle factors that may be affecting the, the methylation or the epigenetic marks in their sperm. The first group of patients that I think the seed test would be most beneficial for are those that have gone through IVF before and had poor outcomes. They make embryos, but they don't make good quality embryos that lead to a pregnancy. The second group of patients that I think it could be very helpful for are those that have red flags. They have lifestyle factors that, may, that you suspect may be affecting their fertility or their chance to make good quality embryos. One of the nice things about the seed assay is it's very convenient for the couple. DNA methylation marks are very stable and can survive uh, high temperatures over a long period of time. So Episonas de designed a kit that the husband can collect the sample at home, place the sample in a pre-labeled box, and mail the sample to Episona. The couple as well as the physician will then receive the results about three weeks later.